Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, there will be a brief announcements period. Second, we'll have our speaker present. Third, we will have a question and answer period. And then fourth, we will have our infamous rebuttal period. The speaker will get the last words. The College of Complexes has two rules. One, one is one fool at a time, and two is no personal attacks. Oh. All right, let's I would like to extend credit to our most gracious waitress, if you'll come on up here, Heather. Charlie and us would like to present you with a Christmas gift. Thank you. And uh, if you don't mind, let me get a hug here for all the wonderful Hi. service. And uh, let's give her a big rousing round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let's wish Heather a Merry, Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas. And I do believe we have a speaker tonight. And what can I put you down for, sir? All right. Justin Tucker, he's going to celebrate the holidays as he presents a slideshow on libertarian themed memes, demonstrating how images shared through social media have been an effective means of spreading the philosophy of liberty. He will also discuss how the phenomenon of memes are a form of 21st century folk art. And he's got a trigger warning, it's excessive hilarity, so let's start. Let's welcome uh, Justin Tucker. Merry Christmas, College of Complexes. Um, we got legal pot here in, in a few days. How cool is that? You guys can thank the Libertarian Party for 40 years of, 40 plus years of pushing that issue. Um, thank you. Um, some things the Libertarian Party of Illinois is up to. Uh, we passed some several, several resolutions. Um, one resolution came out against the graduated graduated uh, income tax, so we urge you to vote no. Uh, we also took a stand against the death penalty, as some Republicans are trying to reinstate that. We came out pro-ranked uh, choice voting, so... Please speak right directly into it. And we also came out against banning e-cigs, so... If this stuff sounds cool to you, uh, I got some libertarian stuff that I can hook you up with. Our oh, next yeah, meeting is January seventh at the Piggery, Irving Park Road, seven p.m. Uh, if you want to get involved uh, and be elected an officer, you can do that at this meeting. Um, Charlie mentioned several upcoming uh, college programs. Again, Joshua Flynn is next Saturday. He's running for 78th District. Please check it out. Andy Williams Jr., who's running for the Libertarian Party presidential nomination, will be here on February 29th. So please come out for that. He's not um, the pop star. No, not that Andy Williams. Um, Libertarian Party of Illinois also has uh, an archive, and I've been collecting Charlie's programs and putting in this archive. So Charlie's programs will be forever preserved. For posterity uh, and forever associated with the Libertarian Party. Yeah. So thank you, Charlie. We also got uh, Dan Berman, has uh, Dan Taxation as Theft Berman. We got some of his brochures at the back. Please read, it's pretty interesting stuff. He's running for president as well. Um, so I'll. Uh, I'll get on with my program here. I had several people ask me, even as I was uh, coming in today, what is a meme? Um, it's basically a shortened version of the Greek word mamine. Uh, and it means to imitate or to mime. So you can see the etymology there. Uh, meme, the word meme itself was coined by Richard Dawkins to describe how ideas sped, spread throughout culture. Uh, so the meme in the context of this presentation refers to images, slogans, etc. 
They're usually shared through the internet, on message boards, social media, and other avenues. Um, people like to collect memes, and people organize these memes into albums or folders or uh, social media pages, and they call them meme stashes. So I originally wanted to call this uh, program Libertarian Meme Stash. Charlie didn't think it was a good idea. But a meme stash, this is my meme stash that I'll be presenting for you tonight. At least some of it. I had to cut back. Um, the advent of uh, very easy to use graphic design software uh, basically allows people of any skill to take images, manipulate them, and share them on social media. Um, so in that sense, uh, memes are like a folk art. Um, some popular memes uh, that have kind of sprang into the popular culture, taxation is theft a few years ago became a very popular meme, going so far as to having a gentleman at a baseball game in Texas standing behind, sitting behind home plate with taxation is theft written on his shirt uh, for, for millions to see. Uh, and right now, Epstein didn't kill himself yes. is a very popular meme. Um, though I disagree that Epstein, Epstein didn't kill himself. Uh, it just is a testament on how memes have permeated popular culture. Um, people who make memes are known as meme smiths or meme lords. Does that have anything to do with my cell uh, it, other than um, meme and mime share the same etymology, not at all. Uh, so memes are basically, like I said, images in this context, or images shared on social media. This is, uh, I think somebody in Illinois made this. Basically took the Libertarian Party uh, into a Star Wars logo. Um, this is a meme that just basically talks about uh, what Democrats want, what Republicans want, and what Libertarians want in this instance. Democrats want to control your money and actions. Republicans want to control your act, uh, your actions and money. And libertarians uh, say to make your own decisions. Libertarian pro-choice on everything, including LGBT rights, since 1971. I thought it began in 69. The party has been around since 71. The movement uh, was a couple years prior. Here's one uh, basic libertarian stance. Abolish the FDA. Um, pretty attractive meme. Uh, here's a meme from the 2016 campaign of Bill Maher saying to Gary Johnson, our presidential nominee, I really hope you get into the debates. That would be great. I, I, I think it would be great also. Too bad he never got into the debates. Send a clear message. Support the only party that stands for all of your freedoms all of the time. Vote Libertarian. Here we get another Johnson meme. 2016 could be the year when the two party hold, when the two party hold on American elections falls apart. It's about time. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Here's a here's a meme of uh, one of our platform planks. Uh, we condemn bigotry as irrational and repugnant. Another Gary Johnson meme. Who ex who exactly was it who decided that the president has to be a Republican or a Democrat? Good question. Another pr uh, platform plank. We oppose the administration of the death penalty by the state. Gary Johnson, uh, kind of a text-based meme here. The initiation of force, whether military, government, or personal against another person or that person's property is wrong. That applies whether it is physical violence, theft, or coercion to force an individual to act against his or her wishes or best interests. When combined with a dose of common sense and real-world governance, the non-aggression principle is a fundamental principle that works. Here's one of, uh, of uh, Jimmy Stewart in uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. You see, people forget what their country means by just reading the land of the free in history books. Liberty is too precious a thing to be buried in books. Men should hold it up in front of them every single day of their lives and say, I'm free. Okay, hold on. Sorry about this. 
Wonderful. Yeah, teraz nie jest ten dobry. One full at time, guys. Just kidding. Test. 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 Thank you, Tim. <clears throat> Here's one of uh, Gary Johnson. The revolution starts here because there are more than two sides to a story with Trump Hillary X'd out. Imagine an America where the only agenda was the U.S. Constitution. You don't really follow that document anymore. Oh, no. Uh, the government is, has no right to regulate the personal relationship of consenting adults. It's not left versus right, it's state versus you. The two-party system is a dinosaur, and where the comet, said Gary Johnson. All parents have the... In have the indelible right. Indelible right to choose the best education for their kids, free of government interference, subsidies, or restrictions. Every law is enforced with guns. The police will hunt or kill to enforce the law. There should be no laws you're not willing to kill for. In memory of Philando, Cast uh, Philando Castile and Alton Sterling, we favor the repeal of all, cr all laws creating crimes without victims. Well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And here it lists several acts of Congress uh, that infringe on the right of guns. At what point does it become an infringement, asked the Libertarian Party. When they shoot up my neighborhood. Are you tired of the endless wars our government gets into? Let's talk. Abolish the DEA, another classic libertarian position right there. Ron Paul, our 1988 nominee, the most important element of a free society is the rejection of the, of the initiation of force. If enough people vote to tax this kitten, does it make it right? Look how cute that kitten is. Taxation is theft. Uh, here we are quoting Dr. King, through, through violence you may murder the hater, but you do not murder hate. In fact, violence merely increases hate. So it goes, turning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Libertarians, we opposed war, spying waste, and big government when it was done by Nixon. Ford, Carter, Reagan, Bush 41, Clinton, Bush 43, Obama. The same goes for Trump. Here we are quoting Ludwig von Mises. There, can be, there cannot be the slightest doubt that migration barriers diminish the productivity of human labor. Here's uh, Nick Sarwark, our chairman. Yes, taxation is theft. Corporate welfare. Republicans, is it good? Is good for if it's for our supporters, Democrats. Is good if it's for our supporters. Libertarians say corporate welfare should be eradicated. Um, National Victims of Communism Day, Libertarian Party. Today we honor and remember over 100 million who lost their lives to the policies of communist regimes around the world. Licensing. We oppose occupational and other licensing laws and fringe on the right, on this right to treat it as a state granted privilege. We encourage certifications by voluntary associations of professionals. Your Snowden, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything, just be free. Uh, here's a recent Twitter activity of the Libertarian Party. There's this gentleman named Andrew T. Walker. It says, with the porn ban, with the banned porn discussion, the past few days have vividly reminded me why I'm not a libertarian. It's a cold, self-maximizing ideology that begins with incredible, sub, with incredibly sub-biblical anthropology of voluntary contract and hate and utility. To which Libertarian Party replied, "Okay, boomer." What's that mean? 
What does what mean? So here's the Libertarian Party of Chicago's banner. It looks pretty sick, right? Libertarians believe that the United States should abandon its attempt to act as, act as policemen of the world. Libertarians believe that property owners should be free from government restrictions on their rights to control and enjoy their own property. Julie Fox, who ran for comptroller in 2014, said, I will do everything in my power to guarantee the people get a truly balanced budget. Sharon Hansen for U.S. Senate 2014 said, It's time to end the war on drugs. Our law enforcement needs to spend time on crimes that have a victim. Victimless crimes should never be prosecuted. As your senator, I will work to abolish drug laws and ruin lives and imprison citizens who have harmed no one. Skopek, Matthew Skopek ran for treasurer 2014. The GOP can hire private security, but they can't stop you from hiring me. Fear does not belong in democracy. And that's in reference to uh, intimidation. Uh, that the Republicans did against libertarians, basically getting them to resent, you know, say that they didn't sign petitions. <coughs> Governor candidate Chad Grimm, in victimless crimes and restore American liberty, crimes in quotes. The biggest threat to liberty today are the laws on the books that create non-violent victimless crimes. In free society, government does not legislate morality, and no one's freedom should ever be taken away for any crime that does not harm another. Ben Coyle, Attorney General. Democrats and Republicans have had their opportunity to completely manage our government and failed. Chris Michael, uh, like if you are tired of reckless government spending. I would like that, like. Here's a cool one, vote, the peace sign. <laughs> Libertarians versus Republicans. Libertarians want to reduce government while Republicans strive for big authoritarian government that they control. Like, if you are tired of wasteful government spending. Like, for over 40 years, Libertarians have been calling for an end to the war on drugs. For over 40 years, we have been called extreme. For over 40 years, our government has sent young men to, pr to prison. Maybe it's time to listen. Uh, this was a platform plank, it looks like, of uh, the Fox campaign. Combining the comptroller and treasurer equals $12 million of taxpayer money being saved every year. Maybe that's something we should still look into. <clears throat> it's my body and it's my choice what I put in it. Next time you hear something described as government funded, remember that government is 100% taxpayer funded. Libertarians believe that individuals own their own bodies and have rights over them that other individuals, groups, and governments may not violate. That is a libertarian porcupine. Uh, it's supposed to, uh, you know, be like the the Republicans got the the elephant, Democrats have the donkey. We have the porcupine. Libertarians believe that the individual that individuals have the freedom and responsibility to decide what they knowingly and voluntarily consume. Libertarians are committed to ending the government's practice of spying on everyone. Libertarians believe that consenting adults should be free to choose their own sexual practices and personal relationships without government interference. <clears throat> potato, potato, tomato, tomato, taxation, theft. <laughs> a libertarian wouldn't do this with Uncle Sam holding a bailout bag. Rights are not gifts from the government. Here's a quote from Benjamin Franklin. I observed that the more public provisions were made for the poor, the less they provided for themselves, and of course became poor. And on the contrary, the less was done for them, and more they did for themselves and became richer. Here's a picture of a link card. Red boot, blue boot. When the government's boot is on your throat, whether it's a le right boot or a left boot doesn't really matter. The Second Amendment doesn't allow for exceptions. Otherwise, otherwise it would have read, unless Congress chooses otherwise. There's a pork and pride again. To be a libertarian is to oppose the growth of government and to aid in the liberation of the individual. Here's Kent McMillan, ran for Senate in 2016. Americans will spend 8.9 billion hours complying with IRS regulations. A simple flat tax would eliminate deductions and abolish the IRS. Uh, here's Ken again. The right to, a self, to armed self-defense is fundamental. 
Gun regulations only infringe on these rights and do not increase public safety. I will oppose any new restrictions on your rights. Claire Ball, um, Illinois Comptroller candidate in 2016 and 2018. In the 198 year history of our state, the highest accounting job has never been held by an accountant. It's time we change that. Here's a, here's a meme uh, that was made for Cash Jackson, our 2018 candidate for governor. Fiscally responsible, he wants 401k government pension, spending cap as a percentage of state GDP, two-third voter referendum for tax increases. Pro Second Amendment, eliminate FOID card, allow out-of-state travelers to carry home uh, under home state law. Oh, that's uh, he's pro-life, uh, which is which is kind of a little controversial at the time among libertarians. But uh, at least he, he his his uh, plan for that was to end taxpayer funding of abortion and and address root causes of abortion. So he didn't want to take away he didn't want to end abortions or ban them, but he wanted to tackle them in other ways. He's pro-life, but he wants. Here's a picture of Cash Jackson and uh, Vice President uh, excuse me Vice Governor candidate Sanj Mohip. Steve Dutner, who's in the room tonight. The Secretary of State office has the highest budget of any other office in Illinois. We need to cut things. We spend a lot of taxpayer money through grants, and I don't see why we need to pay for every group and event out there with taxpayer money. Steve ran for uh, uh, Secretary of State 2018, and he got the uh, first uh, uh, endorsement for a statewide libertarian candidate from a major newspaper. There's the uh, whole slate of our 2018 candidates. Uh, nice looking photo there. Uh, they're trying to, uh, it's supposed to look like a band photo, you know, for rock band. Ah. Libertarian Party, I mentioned uh, ranked choice voting. Ranked choice voting would improve the quality and accountability of elected officials, reduce the impact of money and gerrymandering in our elections, encourage voting for people and solutions instead of a, of a party, and give more power to voters. Whereas libertarians believe that no individual group or government may rightfully initiate force against another individual group or government, as stated in the party platform, whereas libertarians oppose the administration of the death penalty by the state, as stated in the party platform, it is resolved that the Libertarian Party of Illinois vehemently opposes reinstating the death penalty in the state of Illinois. Whereas libertarians believe all persons are entitled to keep the fruits of their labor and call for the repeal of the Income tax, as stated in the party's platform, whereas libertarians believe taxation is fundamentally coercive and extortion extortionary, it is resolved. The Libertarian Party of Illinois vehemently opposes the Illinois fair tax and encourages voters of Illinois to vote no on moving toward a graduation income tax on the 2020 ballot, November 2020 ballot. Uh, here's a few memes that uh, our chapter has made. This is uh, Tom Stoffel. This is means this stands for there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. That was the Libertarian Party logo uh, in the early 70s. I just added the Chicago colors to it. As you can see, the blue and the and the, the red. Uh, this is a, a, a popular meme format. You'll probably see a couple more of these throughout the night. This is called the Distracted Boyfriend. Basically, he's got his girlfriend here, uh, and then another girl passes by, and he looks at her. So, U.S. government is the man. His girlfriend says, minding our own business, and the cute new girl, war with the Middle East. <laughs> here's, uh, here's one of uh, a Navy serviceman uh, in, the, in the embrace and kiss of her lover. On November 20th, 2011, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell Repeal Act of 22 of uh, 2010 went into effect. So we were trying to celebrate uh, advancement in, LS in LGBT rights. Here's Gandhi. The state is a soulless machine. It can never be weaned from violence to which it owes its very existence. Uh, here's a popular meme format. It's, it's, it's uh, the rapper Drake. Uh, and he's, he's repelled at one thing and then he likes the other thing is from the top to bottom. Not using Instagram, not cool. Using Instagram, now that is cool. This is kind of an in-joke because this is what the uh, Libertarian Party of, of uh, Chicago 
used when we got our Instagram form, uh, Instagram account more active. Uh, here's the uh, Benjamin Franklin join or die with the Libertarian Party of Chicago logo right there. Here's a here's a meme uh, with the Nike logo with my, with Michael Jordan. Uh, instead of the basketball, he's got the Libertarian Porcupine, as you can see. Uh, and here is uh, the skyline of Chicago with a spotlight with the Libertarian Party, similar to the bat single. So the Libertarian Party is here to save Chicago. You better believe it. <clears throat> Here's just a cool, uh, sh another shot of the background of uh, or the skyline of Chicago with our logo in the foreground there. Uh, the logo imposed on a Chicago flag. Another variant of the Chicago flag, this time with our logo, is one of the stars there. Here's a, uh, another flag variation where no stars but libertarian porcupines. Here's another meme uh, uh, <coughs> format here. Um, this guy shoots another guy, so this, and then he asks why. In this one, it's the government shoots literally everything. And then he says, why would the free market do this? So those are some memes that our chapter has made. Uh, these next memes, I, I, I put them in no particular order, so we'll see it as we go. These things are, some of these can be really hilarious, and if you uh, don't like people making fun of communism and socialism, you may want to leave the room if your sensibilities uh, might be threatened. Here's a quote from Ayn Rand. The question isn't who is going to let me, it's who is going to stop me. So here you have a uh, you have a picture of the uh, the marchers in Charlottesville. Why do you need a thirty round magazine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. That's why you need a thirty round magazine for when the fascists come marching on your town. Regimes endorsed by Noam Chomsky. He's got Mao, Castro, Ho Chi Minh, Pol Pot, and then he says, "But I have a good feeling about this Chavez guy." Hey. <laughs> Here's the Pope. The Pope is warning about an invasion of libertarians because living in a tax-free compound full of gold and guns while supporting charities and peace on earth is wrong. Uh, here's one from, uh, here's another meme format that kind of does the uh, variation on the Billy Madison lines here. Uh, it's Chris Farley, the government is shut down, to which Adam Sandler says, no it's not. But they stopped stealing our money. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. But you can imagine what it would be like if they did, huh? Uh, here's a picture of uh, is this Ryu from Street Fighter. When, it, when, when you trigger a statist cognitive dissonance, ad hominem. What? Ad hominem. You know, like. I don't get it. Well, in the video game, he ad hom you know, like he, he throws something at you. Uh, that throwing something at you is the ad hominem. It's just a joke. Okay. Um, here's a picture of a guy publicly defecating in public. The lookers on are called it says actual philosophers. The guy doing the defecation says Karl Marx, and the feces on the ground says the Communist Manifesto. Here's uh, cookies. When you have too much butter, it looks like that. When you have too much sugar, it looks like that. So on. But when you get to add communism to cookies, you see that there is no cookie there. <laughs> uh, here's Jesus. Here we see Jesus knocking on doors to collect taxes for feeding the less fortunate. And Jesus is holding a gun. <laughs> I don't remember that in the Bible. Uh, yeah, you got a Venn diagram here. Libertarians, one one circle, Donald Trump and the other. The purple overlap area represents how much Donald Trump is libertarian, which there is none. That may be more of an in-joke libertarian meme. Here's Andrew Yang. When, when your thousand Yang bucks can only buy you a half an egg roll because of hyperinflation due to a dramatically increased money supply. Nice. <laughs> That's a good one.
Here you got Joe Biden, and, and uh, behind him there's a sign that reads, Joe Biden has been protected by assault rifles his entire life. Here you got, um, here you got the late, great Frank Zappa. When people try to tell me how great Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez are, fuck the communists, you know? I don't like those people, to quote Frank Zappa. Frank Sanders has been dead for years. Here you got, uh, here you got um, college liberal. Thinks that more laws will keep people from owning guns. Smokes pot. Next to her you got Rick Santorum. Thinks more laws will keep people from smoking pot. Owns guns. And then below them you got Gary Johnson. And I'm over here just like, can't we just try freedom? Freedom to own guns? Here you got uh, Kermit the Frog in a fetal position. When you're trying to cut back on posting memes, but the government won't stop doing crazy stuff. So here's a uh, popular meme. Uh, uh, there's this uh, political compass. Uh, the top and bottom. The top two quadrants are, are authoritarian. The two bottom quadrants are libertarian. And then you got left libertarian, right authoritarian. Then you got left authoritarian, left libertarian. So everybody agrees that the Hong Kong protests are bad, except for the authoritarian uh, leftist, where they say, uh, actually, uh, yeah, yeah. Because you got a lot of those uh, Soviet, um, you know, uh, the Stalin kind of denialism going on there. Uh, Jesus was not a socialist. The Bible clearly shows very, shows very clearly that he was able to feed people, so says this guy on Twitter, uh, responding to saying Jesus is the world's most famous socialist. Uh, here's, here's, the, uh, here's, a, here's a circle ball, and it represents anarcho-communism. When you claim to be anti-hierarchy, -hier so you have to get rid of all the teachers and parents, and you're left with a bunch of kids that somehow are allowed to rule over anyone that tries to own property. <laughs> Uh, the boy, you better stand for the anthem and like it starter pack. You got a truck that's giving out a lot of exhaust. You got a goatee. You got a Confederate flag. You got Oxycontin. You got, uh, you got uh, chewing tobacco, camouflage, Fox News, NRA, Tommy Laren, who's that blonde right there, some Ambien, and Breitbart News. So here's Bernie. Yeah. For the win. That's what FTW stands for. For the win. Uh, or is that what I mean? Two, two FW. I got that, that wrong. That's not for the win. I'm sorry. That face win. That face win. Thank you. I thank you. Um, I knew I got that wrong. Okay. Face win. Uh, you tell Republican people that the rich are hoarding their wealth, but you marry into money, own four houses, and hoard your wealth. So you got Bernie Sanders doing that. Uh, here's Robin Hood. To say you have a claim to my property. Is to say you have a claim to the labor I perform to obtain it. To say you have a claim to my labor is to say that I am your slave. Here's a popular meme. Uh, it's the meme is usually Batman slapping Robin, but in this case they put Donald Trump's head on where Robin is. I hereby order, and then Batman slaps and says, "I shall do as I please." Yay. Here's that. Uh, here's more of that Drake meme. So Drake doesn't seem to like posting memes making fun of Republicans because you're a Democrat. He doesn't like posting memes making fun of Democrats because you're a post because you're a Republican. But he does like posting memes making fun of each party because they're both a joke. All right, so you got three buttons. The red button says, "In the 40 plus year failed war on drugs. In the 15 plus year failed war on terror. Continue both wars and keep voting for Republicans and Democrats." And the American voters hit the blue button. Am I wrong? <clears throat> Here's a SpongeBob meme. I think it's a Squidward. Uh, his eyes are closed. Opi opioid crisis, 70,000 deaths per year. Smoking, 480,000 deaths per year. Flavored vaping, six deaths. And then he wakes up from his nap. And his eyes are all bloodshot. <laughs> Oh, here's here's one of that political compass quadrant. So this is the uh, this is the libertarian left version of the of the quadrant. This is probably more of an in joke, but uh, 
when tax isn't theft because of the social contract, but the surplus value of labor from contractually agreed wage is. <laughs> How to hide your guns from socialists. You put it in your copy of Basic Economics by Thomas Sowell, that's how. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a picture of uh, Beto O'Rourke, who stepped out of the presidential race. Employee of the Month at the gun shop. Uh, here's a popular meme of, uh, of a girl shutting up another woman by putting her a hand on her mouth. The girl who's being uh, shut up. Immigrants who come from post-Soviet and socialist states. And then the person shushing her, college-aged democratic socialist. That's kind of goes back to that actually kind of this kind of the same sort of thing. Uh, here's a here's a picture of a gentleman at a nightclub. Looks like he's trying to uh, score with the woman. He says to her. So there is this theory of the business cycle, which was invented by this Austrian economist called Mises. You probably never heard of him, but he's considered to be one of the greatest economists. And he showed already in 1912 how excessive credit creation can create malinvestments in the economy. I can I can show it to you over a graph in my place if you want. <laughs> all you gotta do is explain the process of inflation with that girl, and you'd be all set. Yeah. The business cycle. Uh, you got you got this, I guess, a therapist and a woman crying to her therapist. Calling a product or service a human right doesn't magically render it immune to scarcity. So here's this attractive woman that's the wealth built by capitalism, and you got these two. You got a socialist and a communist. You know, it looks like they're kind of giving her the business, might be harassing her slightly. Uh, you got mom, dad, baby, and the new baby. Dad's the Republicans, Democrats the baby. Uh, the, the, the mom's the Democrats. The baby, flipping off the new baby, is the Libertarians, and the baby, new baby, is government. So. <laughs> uh, here's another Bernie. When you have to explain to people why you didn't go to Canada to get your arteries fixed. Here's, here's Matt Stone, one of the co-creators of South Park. I, I hate conservatives, but I really fucking hate liberals. Uh, here's here's a Karl Marx on a uh, mural in a city. Last year marked 200 years since Karl Marx was born. Here's a list of the top five nations where his ideas brought pos prosperity. And you got one, two, three, four, five, and all five of them were blank. Things adults shouldn't believe in anymore. You got Santa Claus, you got the Easter Bunny, you got the Tooth Fairy, and then you got Democrats and Republicans. Here's, here's another Bernie meme. Group, of, group photo of everybody Bernie has lifted from poverty. And all, you can see all four of them are Bernie Sanders. Here's uh, somebody replying to a Bernie Sanders Facebook post. Bernie says, what's the most absurd, med absurd medical bill you have ever received to, uh, to, uh, to which this woman replied, my annual tax bill for other pe people's health care. Uh, here's, a, here's a picture of, um, of uh, Uncle, uh, uh, Stan's uncle on South Park. His name escapes me at the moment. He's a big gun nut. Yeah, Uncle Jimbo. Uh, he's a big gun nut on the show. When a cop sees a legally armed citizen just chilling at their home at 2.30 in the morning. My God, it's coming right for us! Uh, here's a picture uh, of... Um, this was a big controversy a couple weeks back in sports. This guy hits this other guy. The guy hitting the other guy is taxes. The guy getting hit with his helmet knocked off is me. Here's a picture of Paul Krugman. That's no moon. That's a stimulus package. Referring to the Death Star from Star Wars. Uh, Paul Krugman is a Keynesian, and that's kind of the joke. Uh, here's a here's a joke. Here's a here's a meme of, of the Joker from the new Joker movie. He's coming down the stairs, Yang 2020. And then you got another little ant Joker, you know, dancing next to him. <laughs> Landlords raising rent by a thousand dollars. Here's a guy who's sitting next to Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren on an airplane. I already can't find my wallet. Here's this baby. 
sitting on a couch, when you realize that you already owe 61288 towards the national debt. Poor kid. Here's a cat going through some barbed wire. The barbed wire, the war on drugs, and the cat representing drugs. So that cat has no ease getting through that barbed wire. Here's a, here's a meme of a faucet. The water is coming out of the faucet. That's our tax money. Uh, it's supposed to go down to where it says problem taxes were supposed to fix. But the shot glass that's called the politician gets in the way, diverts that water into the other drain, which is labeled politician's friend. Uh, here's a picture of uh, Trump uh, making fun of disabled people. There, next to it, there's a picture of Joe Biden nibbling on the finger. We got Bernie, or er, we got Gary Johnson. Remember when they thought this guy was too crazy to be a presidential candidate? I sure miss Gary Johnson. Here's another one of the distracted uh, meme, distracted boyfriend memes. The boyfriend is the free market. His girlfriend, highly taxed and regulated cannabis. The new cute girl, the guy down the street who isn't changing his prices. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, le weed may be legal in Illinois here in a few weeks, but uh, the black market will still thrive regardless. Here's a picture of Anne Frank, as you know, uh, died in the Holocaust. The law is not a moral compass. The people who hid Anne Frank were breaking the law. The people who killed her were following it. Them offers free health care. Free health care looks like this beat up couch here on the side of the road for free. So. <laughs> Here's Bernie at a hot dog stand. When you go to pay but you realize you forgot to grab your neighbor's wallet. <laughs> All right. So you got a mouse trap that's called socialism. Victor. And then you got Mousetrap the Game, that, you, that I played quite a bit growing up, that's Democratic Socialism. <laughs> so here you got a meme of Family Guy, uh, Kate, or uh, uh, not Kate, um, Meg on the show, with, with the United States Congress seal on her face. You guys always act like you're better than me. And the people looking back at her, all dressed up and dapper. Nickelback, STDs, and cockroaches. So they're much more popular than Congress. <laughs> Especially Nickelback. So this is the uh, anarcho-capitalist flag. The yellow represents liberalism, and, and also it's the color of gold. The black represents anarchy. I took the Illinois flag and superimposed it with the, uh, with the anarcho-capitalist colors. Looks pretty sick, huh? I think that should probably be our, our flag, right? Here's another libertarian meme. The tax funding of stadiums creates socialized sports. We call for the separation of sport and state. Entertainment is not a right. Yeah. Here we got a quote from William F. Buckley Jr. Marijuana never kicks down your door in the middle of the night. Marijuana never locks up sick and dying people, does not suppress medical research, does not peek in bedroom windows. Even if one takes every reefer madness allegation of the pro prohibitionists at face value, marijuana prohibition has done far more harm to far more people than marijuana ever could. That's uh, William F. Buckley, the, one of the intellectual fathers of the modern conservative movement. Uh, I never understood why he could be so anti-prohibition, but the Republican Party never got behind that. I never understood that. Um, Here's a uh, meme of, uh, this is kind of really obscure, there's this rap group called Insane Clown Posse, they have this video where they're talking about the, the wonders of nature, they call them miracles, and one of the lines of the song is, magnets, how do they work? Well, this one is, economics, how does it work? I think that's, that's more aimed towards the Bernie Bros, or the, the, the Buggalos, maybe Bernie Juggalos. Two people know what I'm talking about right now. So here's the distracted boyfriend again. This time he's socialist and his several girlfriends, Venezuela, Ukraine, USSR, North Korea, East Germany, Cuba, Cambodia, and so on. His new girlfriend, or the girl that he's checking out, fictional country. So 
<laughs> Not real socialism. Uh, here's a uh, still of the animated Animal Farm adaptation from the, I guess, the mid 20th century. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. I remember that from the book. <laughs> Here we got, <clears throat> you got Don't Tread on Me, you know, the, uh, the Gadsden flag. It's a big rattlesnake. Then you get the No Step on Snake, which is a, you know, not as, you know, harsh version of that. You get this kind of wimpy little snake down there. Then you got, please refrain from placing your foot on top of this reptilian, and it's a little kid's doodle, and next to it is like another little tiny snake, I don't know what species that is, but here you got Lenin, Marx, Engels, gyms hate these guys, learn their simple secret for rapid weight loss. <laughs> here you got one of my all-time favorites, meatloaf. I would do anything for love. Please stop saying taxation is theft. But I won't do that. Here's a here's Pikachu meme that's very popular right now. Usually it represents like you know a surprise. Taxes are raised. Can no longer afford afford rent. Gets another job, higher pay. Rent goes up, and then Pikachu acts surprised. Chicago taxes be like breathing, one dollar, talking, five dollars, standing, ten dollars, existing, two dollars, lollygagging, two dollars, chewing, one dollar. That's a skit Squidward, another SpongeBob meme. <clears throat> Here's a, a guy drooling with a doodle of the communist, uh, the USSR flag in the background. I stocked the shelves and bagged some groceries. This store is mine now. So here's uh, the Jane, um, uh, da, 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 Jane, not Jane Adams, the, the, the mayor. Jane Byrne Express, the Jane Byrne Interchange, 1998, and then 2019. Looks like a lot has changed in those 21 years, right? Uh, here you have the two buttons uh, meme. These are pretty funny. Uh, it's a guy trying to, you know, it usually points out cognitive dissidence. So one button says, Venezuela is not real so socialism. The next button says, the U.S. wants to interfere uh, Venezuela because they're socialist. And then the guy sweating doesn't know which button to pick are the first world tankies. Some of you may be in this room tonight. <clears throat> you got any, anybody here like Black Flag, the punk rock band? Who is Black Flag, the punk rock band? They're a punk rock band uh, from the 80s. Okay. I saw them recently. Uh, on a music, tour. music died for me in 1987. Oh, that's, that's probably around the time Black Flag was kicking it. And it's uh, probably because of the, uh, I've discovered National Public Radio. One full at a time. Uh. Uh, so you have uh, Republican Party, Democratic Party, TV Party checked off. For guys you know, Black Flag TV Party was one of their big songs. I recommend getting the TV Party single or that's on their album Damaged from 1981. Check it out. Uh, here you got Murray Povich. Uh, America will never be a socialist nation. 45% tax on my income has determined that to be a lie. <laughs> So this is a guy mugging uh, another person. Getting mugged? Just say no. Your robber legally cannot take any of your possessions without your consent. So the law, you know, the law's really helping you out there. So here's Seinfeld. This is the future socialist one. And then you got Kramer. You got any meat? Roses are red, violets are blue, Tax taxation is theft, and tariffs are too. Here's Bernie again. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing someone else's everything. Just take it. <laughs> Here you got Selma Hayek, very gorgeous actress. Emergencies have always been a been the pretext to which the safeguards of individual liberty have been er eroded. But that's actually Friedrich Hayek. So they took the gorgeous Selma Hayek, put Friedrich von Hayek quotes on there. You won't know the difference. 
Uh, here you got somebody trying to pour liquid into another glass. The guy pouring it is impressionable. Millennials. The liquid inside his glass is money. It drips down the side of the glass onto the counter, which that is called Bernie's first house, missing entirely the cup that is represented by Bernie's campaign. All right, we got another one of these two button memes. This time the guy sweating is Karl Marx. Capitalism, one button says, capitalism does not work because people are selfish. The next button says, people will work for the common good in a socialist society. So, which one is it? Here's another Meg meme. Uh, she's, she's socialist. You guys always act like, act like you're better than me. And then you have logic, common sense, and world history looking down their nose at Meg. <clears throat> Star Trek fans in here, so you, got, you got the USS Enterprise. What socialists think they are getting, what they're actually getting is the Borg ship. Who's having a good time today? I'm having a really good time. So you got this guy. Looks like he's like a guy in Logan Square. Logan Square. Ha ha, yeah, I hate gun violence. So I sent a bunch of racist fucking murderers with guns to your door to disarm you. So you got the United, this, this United States ball. When you launch a full-scale war over being taxed 2% on tea hundreds of years ago, but now you're being taxed 30 to 40% on income and nobody even cares. Another Bernie meme, wow. The government is corrupt. To fix this, we'll drastically increase its size and control it has over our lives. <laughs> Here you got Lisa Simpson looking at an empty plate when you finally establish communism to get home for dinner. <laughs> Hogwarts, Harry Potter's alma mater. Hogwarts was an open carry school that defended itself from a school shooter. Here's uh, another Ayn Rand quote. Dagny Taggart, the, uh, the uh, protagonist there in Alice Shrub. Daggy Taggart was 12 years old when she told Eddie Willers that she would run the railroad when she grew up. She was 15 when it occurred to her for the first time that women did not run railroads and that people might object. To hell with that, she thought, and never worried about it again. Here you got Karl Marx. Fake quote. Oh shit, never mind. LOL, I forgot about human nature. Here's another popular meme. It's, it's a... It's a guy looking at a, at a butterfly, and he, the original meme is, is this a pigeon? Usually it's always something different. So the left wing looks at a libertarian, is this a racist and homophobic fascist? Right wing looks at a libertari libertarian, is this a triggered libtard cuck? So <clears throat> what commies think they do, they're the Care Bears, what they really do, it looks like they're shooting people up against the wall there. Mm. Weird how that works. Hard pills to swallow. Democratic socialists are literally just communists who are too lazy to throw a revolution. <laughs> if the government was a joint, it'd be nothing but seeds and stems. <laughs> but if you got a medical card, you can just grow those, uh, throw those uh, seeds into a, a planter and get your weed for free. Socialism is when somebody shoots somebody against the wall. But democratic socialism is really cool. It's got balloons and stuff. Uh, here's a Cuban, Cuban propaganda grand, ah, Cuban propaganda during the revolution. Our revolution is not communist. Our revolution is humanist. The Cubans only want the right to an education, the right to work, and the right to eat without fear, the right to peace, justice, freedom. Sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, bring back the boost. One full at a time, sir. What? Go, go. Mm -hmm. So you got this uh, presumably tanky protester. Once more government. And then you got the riot police spray peppering her with more government. <laughs> so <clears throat> tax theft is when the guy robs somebody. And then taxation is when your neighbors are robbing you. Any questions? It's passed by a legislature. Kissed me. Taxation is theft. 
This is a good meme to share on St. Patrick's Day. So you got you got Tom from Tom and Jerry, who's representing four people. He sticks a a pool a pool cue in the hole that's voting for a living wage. And then Jerry pulls it on the other side. Cost of living increase. Getting ready to poke him in the bum. Nobody. And then Ralph comes through the, the window from, from the Simpsons. Keynesian economic. Keynesian economists. Of course, they like the broken window. They think that it stimulates the economy. So here's another one of those uh, memes with the, with the butterfly. Statist. The butterfly forcing others to relinquish part of their paychecks for government programs. Is this compassion? So you got a guy, he's reaching for the ball. He's the low income entrepreneur. The, the, the ball he's trying to obtain is starting a new business. But wait, behind him is government license and fees. So you got, this is, these are, this is a meme that's called the Velociraptor. It's basically the raptor from Jurassic Park asking philosophical questions. If libertarianism would benefit negative mega corporations, why don't mega corporations support libertarianism? I wonder why. Here's a picture of Stalin. Dark humor is like food. Not everybody gets it. Here's the two buttons, another one. First button, you're entitled to the full, full value of your labor. The next button, the government should take some of the value out of your paycheck. Socialists don't know which button to push. GOP, bomb every brown country on earth. Democrats, hire more LGBT pilots. Yuri Gara Gagarin, didn't Gagarin, didn't drink, didn't smoke, and trained all his life in order to spend 108 minutes outside the USSR. That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> back humor, man. Back humor. <laughs> so you got the Gatson flag. Uh, you got you got a cobra with a top hat and the monocle or a cane. I do mind the way you walk, old chap. We all know who you're going to get there. Not left, not light, not right, just free libertarians. Set free. 80 year old Russian. The communist regime in my country was horrific. My husband and three children were taken away by the secret police and never saw them again. 19 year old college student. Actual error. Because he knows better than her. Uh, here you got Joe Biden who's representing the IRS, creeping on this young woman, who's your paycheck. Uh, here's a meme that's, uh, that's kind of a Jordan Peterson taught when Jordan Peterson was on Channel 4 in the UK. Jesus says, feed the hungry and take care of the poor. And to which replies the interviewer, so you like socialism? To which Jesus kind of, you know, WTF. Here's a, here's a couple walking down a country road. Not all men just want sex. Some just want to talk, some just want to walk and talk about how ridiculous our firearm laws are. So here you got Pennywise the Clown standing behind a, uh, behind a, uh, a, a, a sheet drying in the wind. His silhouette is socialism. The balloons popping up behind uh, the sheet is free stuff, and the his his potential victim are millennials. So here you got AOC and Bernie Sanders uh, um, that are that are in the you know in the recreation of the famous scene from uh, 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 Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. We were close to economic collapse when the democratic socialism began to take hold. Here you got this guy who looks really worried. Well, wait, is that a gun? Why do you have a gun? I don't know why anyone would ever need a gun. I've lived an incredibly sheltered life and don't like the fact that I'm responsible for my own safety. You got a woman. Uh, I'm assuming she's on a train, maybe. I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, this guy's creeping up behind her. Tax is the price we pay to not go to prison. She's not having any of it. 
Uh, from Office Space, there's that scene where they're oh. they're they're destroying the printer. Uh, that printer is my checking account, and uh, the guy with the bat is an income tax. The other guy, Social Security that I'll never see, and then the other guy, terrible insurance, all beating up on your checking account. So here's a uh, picture of uh, uh, the tanks that that plowed over the protesters in Venezuela a few months ago. Found a reason for a civilian-owned rocket launcher right here. <clears throat> so here you got uh, May Day, 1917. The capitalists will, s will sell us the rope for which we will hang them, said Lenin. Then in 1991, you got Lenin's uh, statue being removed. Here you got Jesus pre preaching the Sermon on the Mount. And thou shalt not kill unless the government tells you to and you're just following orders. Then it's totally cool. So this guy's got cardboard with things written on it. Juice, salad, spaghetti, fork, spoon. When you and your comrades finally build a communist utopia and it's time for dinner. Uh, here's, here's kind of a meme that talks about uh, um, voluntary association. Bake my cake. Uh, conservatives would fight to the death for that sort of association. Now conservatives are like, post my comment on Facebook with the you know, gun of the law. I don't, I can't tell if this is a real quote or not, but it's Ariana Grande, the the cute pop singer. If taxation without consent is not robbery, then any band of robbers have only to declare themselves a government, and all their robberies are legalized. All right, let me. Let me, let me just, uh, I gotta wrap it up here. Um, how far am I done? Oh wow, there's still a lot of more I didn't, I didn't get to go through. Uh, let, me, let me pick a couple. Here's one. Five guys and nobody, no food and everybody dies. <laughs> Mao, Stalin, Lenin, Marx, Engels. Uh, here's the last one, I'll end on this one. So this is Justin Amash replying to a, treat, uh, a tweet by Donald Trump, so interesting to see progressive Democrat Congresswoman uh, who originally came from countries whose government are a complete and total catastrophe, the worst, most corrupt in, anywhere in the world. Amash replies, to tell these American citizens, most of them who were born here, to go back to the crime-infested places they came is racist and disgusting. I hope Justin Amash becomes a libertarian presidential nominee. Uh, and thank you for uh, listening to my presentation. Yeah. Who wants to moderate questions? Uh, well, not, okay, we can take about maybe 15 minutes worth because it's about 7.45. Are you capable of self-moderating? I could self-moderate, sure. Yeah. You mind? Okay. Who's got questions? What do you want me to do? Turn off the projector. Top yes, sir. Is power. Yeah, I could. I have a question. I can see by right your there, remarks that you're a big proponent of the big yeah. lie theory. Of the big lie theory? But my question is, do you expect your anti-socialism to fly with young people today? Um, very, not all young people like socialism. There's a lot of young people who dislike socialism. So, yeah, I guess the ones who want young people who like socialism won't like libertarianism, but uh, there are a lot of young people who do like libertarianism. So I guess it depends on who you talk to. That's 10 or 12. One full at a time. I'll get to your question later, Charlie. Sir, Vic. Vic uh, forgive me. What is the big lie theory? Can someone explain that to me? It's when you say it long enough and loud enough, this whole thing about 100 million people being killed under socialist governments. Okay. No. All right. Uh, I mean, that's the big lie. You say it right. long enough and loud enough. Russell, right? Yeah. Okay, Russell. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> Hey, look, one hold on, one bullet at a time, please. Russell's got the question. Sir, 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 one bullet at a time. Back in Germany, there was a lot of young people that thought Hitler was great, too. I'll help you. I'm not talking about Hitler. Hitler one bullet at a time. What was the question? I missed it. Uh, don't know nothing yet. No, I agree. Hitler did kill all those people. I know he did. He didn't mention that about Hitler. But all right, who's got a question? Are there more than 10 or 12 young people are libertarian? Yes. Uh, who's got a question? That's the question. Who's got a question? Okay. Uh, Dave. Uh, 
Didn't the um, Nazi party stand for national socialist German workers party? It did, and if you read their program, many of the planks that they, minus the racist stuff, are uh, almost identical to what many socialists advocate, advocated for many years. Charlie, what's up? Yeah, I was involved in getting legislation passed to, for taxation for public transit through the state legislature and the constitution of the state of Illinois and that money was used to provide public transit, which it is. And I don't understand how that constitutes theft or a crime. I thought I was engaged in good citizenship. Okay, so uh, let's say you, you're taxed and you don't pay your taxes. Uh, they may garnish your wages if you don't do that. Uh, they'll try to, you know, take you to court. You know, eventually down the line, somebody's gonna come with a gun and uh, is it theft, kill you sir? or, or is it theft? Is what I ask. Yes, it is theft, and, and I'm explaining to you why it's theft. Through a le legislature. Just because a legislature, a legislature passes something does not mean they're committing in in in, in uh, coercive what kind activities. Of science are you using? I'm sorry. <laughs> Getting a law passed in a legislature. Is that if it if it's if it uh if it that's state if it raises taxes uh, well yeah any action of government is, 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 is pretty theft, much sir. It is yes it is theft yes uh, taking taking government money for uh government transit it's is according theft. to the constitution. Well, the Constitution, uh, just because it's the Constitution law. says it doesn't mean it's right or then how do you right. Then how do you, right. Right. How do you explain the commons that uh, Adam Smith provides for? He was too was supporting for taxation for the commons in his book, The Wealth of Nations. All right, uh, George, you had a question. I, 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 what, do the, what do the libertarians think about the attempted coup that's been going on for the past three years by the Democrats? I don't think it's a coup. They're I all within, they all have gone through processes. Trump is a uh, tyrant, and uh, this is a uh, the tools of the Constitution does give Congress to keep the president in check. It's not a coup. It's totally a process that uh, is been followed and uh, I just, you know, previously just argued doesn't mean just because the, the legislature what makes it valid. It did go through the process. The articles of, of the impeachment. They She's were, what was it, abuse of power was one of the articles and what was the other article? There's no charges or there's no crime. Uh, I think it was abuse of power, and what was the other one? Obstruction of, Obstruction of Congress. Or, so, I mean, that's what they got him on. If those aren't crimes, I guess you can make an argument that they're not. Over here in the corner, way down there. Yeah, Joe, what's up? So on the topic of memes, the LP itself is produced. Can you explain why the porcupine is the LP symbol? Because the porcupine is a defensive animal. Uh, it doesn't really uh, go on the prowl, but it does have... Uh, you know, it's got spikes on its back to protect itself against aggressors. So uh, there's this really good um, picture of a lion who, in the in the I guess the Sahara or whatever, and it, it's basically just kind of hanging out with this porcupine. Can't eat it because the the lion knows the lion, one of the most the king of the jungle, can't even mess with the porcupine. So that is why the porcupine is. Uh, a symbol of libertarianism. Uh, any more first round questions? I got one. <laughs> yes. Uh, how do libertarians, if you don't tax, how do you expect to pay for roads, railroads, uh, streets, all of the uh, parks, uh, everything that uh, is property more or less of the public in the public sphere, not owned by private companies? How do, you, how do you pay for roads that are used by... Well, a real-life example uh, we have for paying for roads are tolls. Um, so that's one way. Uh, um, do you think all the streets would be toll roads? The, the or you can have a subscription service. So if you live on Armitage Avenue, maybe you charge, you know, get charged uh, for living on Armitage Avenue to pay for the road. Uh, but I mean, ta taxation of theft isn't really so much a policy prescription as it is a philosophical uh, stance. So... Uh, not all libertarians want to abolish government, so government 
is force by definition, so there will be uh, some force there. It's just the degree. Uh, so uh, libertarians prefer taxation to be as least coercive and and as as voluntary as possible. The big the big uh, um, infringement being the income tax. Uh, libertarians have never backed down from wanting to abolish the income tax. Any other first round questions? Charlie. Yeah, one of the. Jim, you're off the hook. Thanks. Uh, key issues of socialism is providing health care for everyone who needs it. Yet there were several means that you objected, libertarians apparently object to providing health care for people who need it. Is that for real? Uh, I don't recall those memes that I shared that said we didn't support. Libertarians support people well, getting health care. They want, they want to, to get all the government. They want to... I can't afford it. You can't, uh, they they want to get... Uh, I mean, free market... The, the med medical care in America does not exist on a free market. There's uh, You you don't know what you're paying when you go to the doctor. And you go any other business, you know, that has a price tag on it. That doesn't happen with health care. So libertarians aren't against health care. They're just against stealing other people's money to pay for your health care. Oh, so I should just die? I don't, uh, uh I mean, I, uh, maybe, maybe, <laughs> don't tempt me, Charlie. Uh, let's move on to another question. How do I get out there? Oh, Hell, uh, don't you got, I don't know, don't, aren't you union? Don't, don't they give you something? <laughs> you guys don't over here. care. All right, we get you got a question over there. No, Russ, you got a, did you have a question? Or? No, I'll, I'll wait. Okay. What kind of people Couldn't you just you? buy an insurance policy? Yeah, that's one way you could do it. Um, I'm poor. But uh, the government forces you to buy health insurance. No, you know, so, I mean, not, not, no, health, there's no free choices in health care. Yes? You know, I don't want to kind of... Listen, I don't want a rebuttal to say, but I want to say, um, actually, I am agree with you said, because I heard today from some Russian European no. radio, about exactly deductible and insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, blah, 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 okay? So, a uh, couple doctors in suburbs here, they say in the radio, okay, European, some European radio domestic, no, if people not pay deductible, and if only they have, I don't understand too much Medicare and Medicaid yet, but if they don't That's pay deductible and blah, 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 doctor refused to see them, so how you will, how you will explain that? You think it's normal? You think it's right? You, you, humanitarian? Free market no, no. They can send to Cook County Hospital, right? But they will refuse, like, doctors to see patients. You think it's normal? No I don't way. like the current setup of the medical system at all. Um, I do not believe in the status quo of the medical system. I think that uh, I think think that there's uh, multiple factors in play. You've got price controls. You have got intellectual property, co co copyrights, and patents that prohibit other people. They are supposed to help people, but it, the the government just messes up everything that it touches. That's baloney. There's no deductible in socialized medicine anymore. No, no, no. I'm talking about the She's talking They about deduct price. money from your paycheck She's about to pay for sector, it. Libertarian. That's not marketing. private sector. It it's only private sector in that the government forces you to buy there from. There is no deductible. She's the, talking the about. The insurance agents and the government in got together medicine. and they they kind of made a thing and they called it Obamacare. We there don't. We don't. No it's not free market, deductible sir. Deductible in socialized medicine. Which yeah, they just deduct it out of your paycheck. That's right. not a deductible. Uh, who's go. got another for a second round yeah, question? Right Russ. Right. Now, in healthcare, where you have an actual private sector run like LASIK, plastic surgery, you actually have prices going down. Yes, let's. We should. We should. LASIK and said plastic surgery. Uh, um, yeah, I, we need. I think that. We need cheap plastic surgery. <laughs> no, we need. Uh, yeah. This is your position. <laughs> market-driven healthcare. Affordable. We don't have that in this country. I would like more of it myself. All right. Who's got another second-round question? Right there. Dave. 
Yeah, if uh, there were no health care at all, then uh, wouldn't it be very, very cheap because it would be competitive with itself? Oh, yeah, it is today. Yeah, we don't have that competition in the system now. It would be... Uh, Milton Friedman's proposal was to get rid of licensing, and that would really open up the free market. Yeah. And, uh, the Clack uh, yes. I'm a what it. I'm a what it. You know, one, one of the things, uh, I work for an organization called Americans for Prosperity, and in Florida they have this thing called Certificate of Need, where if you were going to be a healthcare provider, a hospital, for example, you had to, like, apply to a board to demonstrate that there was a need in the community to establish your hospital. So there were barriers to entry, restrictions to supply. So if you're going to try to claim that we somehow do live in a free market uh, environment of competition okay. in the healthcare industry, I would point that it is only recently that AFP Health eliminates certificate of need in Florida. And now there are so many other... Barriers to entry, Do you want lemon? regulations, licensing this requirements. No, 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 no. This is a free market. Please. No, it is not, sir. I want it just as much as this guy does. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Good coming. question. Any other question? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not a no, it's fine. All right, who wants to do a rebuttal? Raise your hand. All right, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We only, we, we, it's almost eight o'clock, so we're going to go to rebuttals. So we're going to go to rebuttals. Thanks, guys. It was a good talk. All right, now, let's go. How many, Andy, figure out? What? Three minutes apiece. Okay, let's get up there and start moving. I'll go take the first rebuttal then if nobody else is going to do it. Let me get in here. I'm a, you go ahead. Coffee? You're up. Sorry about that. Justin, thanks for the presentation. Memes are the propaganda posters of the modern day. You might have heard about Article 13 in the European Union. Use that. Use the mic. I am. Um, uh, they tried to ban memes that use copyrighted materials. So in a way, Article 13 of the EU, which fortunately failed and has been repealed, is kind of like the Stamp Act of our day. It's the thing where you said, you know, it's the thing that triggered the American Revolution. You can't have a document unless it had the King's seal of approval on it. So I'm glad these memes are out there. I'm, I'm glad these memes are out there because they enable us education about politics and everyone on every side of the political spectrum uses it. Um, you can learn more about memes by going to knowyourmeme.com. And to make memes online, go to imageflim.com slash meme generator. Um, now, I'm a libertarian socialist, which means I think the poverty level should be raised to $75 million. But I have to say I'm a bit triggered by this presentation. So triggered, in fact, that I have to do what a typical socialist does, make a meme with a wall of text and explain how caloric intake was higher in the USSR than it was in the US between 1960 and 1990, so I don't know what all these starvation memes are about. But I'd like to thank Justin for exposing the link between socialism and fascism. That may, uh, may not sound like it makes a lot of sense, but if it weren't for Justin, we wouldn't know about Bernie Sanders' plan to put us all in concentration camps. Anybody? <laughs> There have been a lot of jokes tonight at the expense of socialists. Libertarians say socialism is theft, but I assure you, socialists don't want to steal from you. All socialists want is your company. Yeah, right. For sure, Joe. Company, private company, Joe. Capitalists say socialists killed 100 million people, but don't be too upset about that. They're just getting started. Thank you, everyone. All right, next. <laughs> No. <laughs> there were points he made that I agreed with. Pro-choice. There were some points. I didn't think I would agree with him on as many points as I did. All right, let's settle down. A, One more good, time, guys. He had a pretty good time knocking around socialism, but there's a few things he didn't mention. The history of factory jobs leaving this country for cheap, cheaper labor overseas. The millions of kids in America who go to bed every night hungry. His hero, Ann Rand, Ryan, she ended up going on Medicare when she got lung cancer. What a hypocrite. Yeah, she did. What a hypocrite. Last year alone, 37 million prescriptions in this country couldn't be fulfilled. He didn't mention that 
we dropped more bombs during the Vietnam War than the, than the entire history of warfare. He didn't mention the genocide on Native Americans. He didn't mention the millions of Africans, black Americans who were either killed on the way here, who were held as slaves. And then he obviously didn't mention the capitalist class in Germany's genocide either. It was very one-sided. All right, thanks. We got an open mic and we got some rebuttals. Come on. Good one, Dave. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Not sure. Not yet. Okay. All right. We got more rebutters and an open mic. <laughs> yeah. You mean, uh, David, you have open to mic. have a timing when you go to I did read some of his presentation and I found it interesting. Some of it I did not, but then what do I know? I'm only a liberal and a Democrat. <laughs> As. Uh, uh, when I, he also quoted Ludwig von Mises. Now, when I was growing up, one of the sidebar cartoons of Huckleberry Hound dealt with a cat named Mr. Jinx, and he was chasing two little mice, Pixie and Dixie. And Jinx would always say, I hate Mises to pieces. <laughs> well, I hate Mises to pieces. <laughs> Who's next? People had their hands up for a rebuttal. Who's next? Okay, David, uh, do your best. Thank you. The fact is that we've gotten ourselves locked in to a kind of a socialism. And people are so ignorant about it, most of them would say, oh, I don't ever want to have socialism. When, in effect, we're really living under socialism. Under Woodrow Wilson, we got the Federal Reserve, which uh, took our money and took our gold off the market and said that uh, you use uh, Federal Reserve notes, and that's that. Well, chalk up one for the Socialist Party. Uh, then, uh, it, later, we got income tax. And income tax is another form of confiscatory socialism. And uh, we got that. And as time has gone on, the government has encroached on us with so many laws that you can't roll up your sleeve. You can't just say, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and go into a business. You have to first fill out 4,900 documents about um, why I want to go into business, what I want to go into business for, how much I intend to invest, uh, what I'm going to do, and so on and so on. Now, there was a time, even as recently as the 1930s, in which you could have said, well, I think I'm going to open up a pop company and sell soda pop. Uh, don't try that today, baby. But uh, I will uh, tell you that um, they've got us by the short and curlies. And short of any, of some kind of a major movement away from socialism, we're going to continue to be bogged down by this sort of thing. I like, there's a story that I like to tell. Uh, this is a, a story about a, um, an Appalachian guy that came here and who could hardly read and write, and his name was Royce. And Royce came to Chicago, the big city, and he accidentally won the lottery. And he got himself almost a million dollars. So he thought, I'm going to open up an electric company, and I'll sell electricity by subscription, and I have a way of producing electricity very cheap, and uh, this should be profitable. But only 
within the first hour of him doing this, the men from the PUC come and say, oh no, Royce, you can't do that. That's against the law. Royce says, well, I thought we had free enterprise. The minute he mentions free enterprise, they bow in the direction of Washington and they say, oh yes, we are free enterprise. <laughs> then they say, but not where this is concerned. The government gives exclusive right to the electrical utilities. So Royce says, well, I'm going to start a bus company. And he um, buys a bunch of buses, rehabs them, hires drivers. He says, well, I can hire a driver for $100 a day. I can hire a, uh, I can get insurance for the bus for $100 a day. And I can get away with $100 a day for gasoline. So I should be able to rake in about $600 a day from bus fares. So that's what I'm going to do. And then men from the PUC are right on him as soon as he puts his first bus out and they say, oh no, Royce, you can't do that. And he says, well, I thought we had free enterprise. Oh, the minute he mentions free enterprise, they bow in the direction of Washington, D.C. and they say, God bless free enterprise. We're America, my country, love it or leave it. But not where this is concerned because uh, we give exclusive right to the you, the public utility for transit. So Royce says, well, golly, if I can't run a bus service and I can't uh, have a, an electrical company, uh, then what can I do then in this so-called free enterprise system? What, what can old Uncle Royce do to actually make money? And they say, oh, uh, we'll tell you what you can do. You can go sell Amway, you asshole. In the appreciation of memes, I'm going to see if I can pull one up here that really describes the uh, Trump administration but it looks like I'm not going to be able to go online and do that. So I've got another one that's on the computer here that I will expressly say why I liked the uh, Libertarian Party. It's going to take a minute to find here, but during that thing, my journey a little bit more towards more Libertarian views has to do with the fact that uh, we have... Uh, the special favors given by corporations in a lot of ways. And that um, these special favors given to corporations turns our democracy into what we call, I call a kleptocracy. Because we don't have a lot of the um, uh, things on here. I'll see if I can find this in a second here because this is a really good uh, meme that uh, I think will be good if I can just pull it up. Whilst we're waiting, sir, in your regards to communism, how about those that were killed at the gulags? How about those that were sent to Siberia? How about those that are still under authoritarian oppression around the world? The light of liberty has shone brightly in Western capitalist countries. We have freedom of the press. We have freedom of religion. We have freedoms to do most, basically, you know, in a lot of cases, everything that uh, you and your so-called communists would put away. I don't think that uh, we understood that in 1989, the world made a decision to renounce communism. And because it was renounced, they went capitalist. And even though it hasn't it's still been the best way to get most people out of poverty around the world. You get a good economy with good jobs, you'll get more people working faster than any socialist country ever has. You know, if you get, you know, one thing about socialism, all people are equal, all people are equally poor. Yeah. You have not maybe the right to a living in capitalism, you have the opportunity to work, 
to better yourself and to rely more on your self-reliance. Markets are good because you cannot exist in a market without serving some kind of need. And that means you have to serve others to get ahead in business. And if they choose you through the votes of your dollar, that's exactly what it goes. You know, we, we I'd, I'd much rather live here in the United States than in any year so-called socialist utopias like Cuba, like North Korea, or any other place. Because in order to have socialism and communism, you have to have some kind of authoritarianism and political repression. I'm not going to sit here and be saying that the United States is a perfect country, but in hell is a lot better than all the rest because we do self-correct a lot of our problems. And a lot of our stuff happens to go with the process of self-correction. It's called an election. And in most cases, they're free and they're fair in the U.S. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. I myself am not a huge fan of memes as a format for sharing information. I agree that with something Joe said, they are basically like propaganda posters, and that is as limiting as it is liberating for circulating ideas. Um, this was a quote from um, Memoirs of a Superfluous Man, which I've cited a couple of times before by the late Albert J. Nock. This was written in 1943. And he's looking back at his time as a student, uh, or just after he finished college in the 1890s, when he became an opponent of American wars overseas. The period I speak of, the Spanish-American War, and its consequences in the Caribbean, the Mid-Pacific, and the Far East were before the public. I was looking at our first full-blown adventure in overseas imperialism, and a most amazing and repulsive sight it was. To my unaccustomed eyes, the war itself seemed a dastardly affair, and the attendant hypocrisies indulged in by those who were promoting it, from the president down, seemed utterly contemptible. I could make nothing of the seizure of the Philippines but an unprovoked act of particularly brutal highwaymanry. Years afterward, during our next military adventure, when I saw Americans in hysterics of pious horror over quote-unquote enemy atrocities, I marveled at the convenience of a memory which had so quickly granted oblivion to hell-roaring Jake Smith and the water cure, quote-unquote water cure. Uh, the great doctrine of manifest destiny reappeared, freshened up by a well-earned rest from hard service in the decade of 1840 to 1850. Now it was our manifest destiny not only to exercise a hegemony over the whole hemisphere, but also to raid and steal whatever desirable possessions we could rest with impunity from poor and weak peoples anywhere in the world. And that's a very, I would say, articulate criticism of imperial policy, uh, and one with pretty deep roots in the libertarian movement before it was even aware of, you know, becoming a, a separate movement or a separate political party, when it was just a voice in the wilderness uh, in a highly bureaucratic, uh, highly corporate, uh, oligarchic, uh, gilded age world and the decades after. Later on in the book, he's thinking about one of the oddest things he'd ever heard, an infatuation with money. Ever since 1918, people everywhere have been thinking in terms of money, not in terms of commodities, and this in spite of the most spectacular evidence that such thinking is sheer insanity. The only time I was ever a millionaire was when I spent a few weeks in Germany in 1923. I was the proud possessor of more money than one could shake a stick at, but I could buy hardly anything with it. I crossed from Amsterdam to Berlin with German money in my billfold amounting to nearly $1.25 million in pre-war value. Ten years earlier, I could have bought out half a German town, lock, stock, and barrel with that much money. But when I left Amsterdam, my best hope was that it might cover a decent dinner and a night's lodging. Anyway, I know that's my time, so we'll leave it at that for now, unless there's a second turn. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah to all, and Kwanzaa eventually and all that. And you also. Hey, we got more people ready to go. Yeah. No, I'm not up. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next on the reality? Oh, no. Ch Charlie. All right, one minute. Let's see. Uh,
All right. Yeah, that before the <coughs> All right, let's thank our speaker for a very nice presentation there. We covered a lot of topics here. Uh, I'll be eclectic here as usual. Um, regarding the medical, first of all, first of all, medicine has to be licensed. Um, we had a regular here for a number of years at the college. Uh, I can speak about him now. He hasn't been here in quite some time. He was kept at a mental institution, I believe, for two decades. When he came out, he began to practice medicine, alternative medicine, and was seeing patients. He was uh, prosecuted for doing so. Uh, people, we've actually studied this. My friend, uh, the history of medicine, uh, it, 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 it had to correct itself around 1900. Uh, as I were talking about last week, people were selling Indian Joe's Kickapoo juice, you know, as medicine, when it was in fact not medicine, but possibly not good for your health. Uh, Something he had it done to put the, uh, medical care on a straight course, uh, and rather people self-medicating, and certainly not pr the public sector, free market type uh, thing that anybody will sell you anything. They will take advantage. That you've got to watch these situations because people are experiencing pain or terminal illnesses and they're very vulnerable to exploitation and fraud. And it's an, we, are, we have to be grateful that the government steps in on those occasions to regulate that industry. Uh, to, I realize this runs contrary to your libertarian concepts, but it is a very, very pragmatic application of governance, which has to be done since the free market will not do it on, the, on their own. Absolutely categorically not. I see this, every night I see this, um, I, I work late, I see this infomercial where they're trying to sell you this seaweed from Iceland as the, as the great cure. <coughs> Some seaweed, the purest seaweed he tells you. You know, this is, this is not medicine, this is, this is ridiculous. Anyhow, the next thing is, uh, taxation is theft. Uh, I'm sorry, if uh, taxation is a legislative measure, I, I deal with the, the federal, state, and local legislatures, and when I, we pass legislation, it's all according to the law, rule, or regulation government-wide. Uh, there's nothing fraudulent about the activities I have engaged in trying to get legislation passed. Now I am affiliated for many, many years, and we do a thing every on April 15th through the auspices of the War Tax Resistors League. However, the War Tax Resistors League is intelligent enough to realize that the taxation, that the budget that is passed is perhaps not one that members in our community do not agree with. But we don't say, we don't come up with silliness or nonsensical statements or assertions that it's theft. We say it's improper. It is not the balance, the budget that we seek. And we are actively engaged, and those people, the serious ones, the leaders of the, of the group, are face the, um, uh, the jail time, and some have served sentences for this regard, but they don't come up and say, well, it's theft. It's not theft in any way, shape, or form than any other piece of legislation that was passed. I may not like, I may not like 50% or more of the legislation that's passed by any given body uh, at the federal, state, and local level, but I don't come up with some, some unsustainable position that it's a not legitimate government. It is in fact government and it, that's how government works. If you don't like the budget or the taxation of the government, why don't you do what I do? I put on my coat 
and I go to Washington, D.C., and I talk <coughs> to them. And or I go to Springfield, Illinois, and I put on my coat and I go down there all the time. Or I put on my coat or I go downtown. We you know this. And I talk to the the aldermen. But if you don't if you don't want to exert the effort, then accept what is or what that those two bodies decide to do it. It's very point thing. And last of all, I was trying to think there's a lot of criticism of socialists of communist countries. And I was trying to think, what is what is a libertarian country like? Like what is life like? And I was thinking perhaps it's like England at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and around 1760 when you had a guy like Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I guess if you want to think he's the, the kind of guy you want to emulate, or he's in symbolic of the free market capitalist system, uh, I'm not certain about that. I don't know. If, I didn't see any mimes about Scrooge, but I may come up with some myself. Are All right, no, thank you very much. Are there no prisons? Are there no workouts? Yeah. Put me down for nothing. And of course, <laughs> as of right now, I think the best meme that's ever been made was put on the screen. Good meme. Yes. We provided jobs. Good meme. I dig it. Our government is. Okay, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to keep my stuff brief. I just uh, his name is Charlie. The guy. Charlie Paydock. Yeah. All right. You, you know, I, I the, there's a couple of points he made. One of the uh, ones he made right before he left the this idea that you know, for example, if I didn't do the kinds of efforts that he did, my objections are somehow without merit that, you know, if I don't even engage in that level of effort, that it kind of doesn't count or something like that, and I have to disagree with that. I think presenting the argument, and even if you don't act on it, doesn't invalidate the argument. The argument either stands or falls on its own merits. And I just wanted to go back. I think the biggest thing I disagreed uh, with Charlie about was this idea that well, if it goes through the formal legal process, it is therefore somehow just automatically justified that it's a simplistic slogan, it's a silliness that if you say taxation is theft, but I think a very serious case could be made that just because you gather a bunch of people in a room and more people agree with the theft than don't, that somehow it is justified. I don't care if that room happens to be a legislative chamber. Oh, yeah. I don't care if you call it a social contract. The idea that if you don't hand over the money to be given over to other people, people with guns will eventually come for you. That is that the state, by definition, is the legalized monopoly on the use of force. Don't we have a constitution? And you don't like it? One pull at a time, God, Charlie. Please, please. It bring, brings up an interesting point. Don't we have a constitution? I used to think so, but, uh, you know, with all these campaign finance restrictions, we violate the First Amendment. With the Patriot Act and, and FISA spying, we violate the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable search and seizure. Uh, the idea that we have a constitution in any meaningful, stable sense is an absurd farce. So you're against the constitution? I'm a, I'm One no, fool at a time, I'm Charlie. Two fools at a time. I'm a, I am in favor of the Constitution as it was originally written and intended. Oh. This idea of a living, breathing Constitution pretty much renders it okay. completely uh, non-enforceable and, and completely... So, I just wanted to say, just because you gather a bunch of people in a room, you know, what did they say? What did they say? Uh, democracy is uh, two wolves and a sheep deciding what's for dinner. I, I don't want to be dinner. All right, Andy, your last rebuttal, right? Yeah. They, they got elected, man. Okay. You ever heard of an election? One fool at a time, Charlie. Yeah. One fool at a time, Charlie. Well, I think our speaker covered a lot of ground tonight. There were a a lot of good good ideas in there that are shared by people all over the world. Um, the idea that socialism means uh, you're going to destroy the country, 
that's absurdly false. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's exciting. Our speaker tonight gave a, a great example of what I've been talking about for 20 years about people that are very well informed and intelligent, well spoken on some things, but living in a bubble of unreality, <laughs> not, not seeing a, 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 living in a blizzard, standing a in a blizzard and can't be a single, see a single snowflake. Okay, the idea, the very idea that you can have a flat, fair tax when you have billionaire predators that are eating everything in sight yeah. is absurd on the face of it. It is absurd on the face of it. It is a, it, it's a prescription for the destruction of equality in a society so that if everybody's paying the same flat rate, the people at the bottom paying the flat rate, flat rate they're not going to have enough money left over to save or accumulate wealth or anything else, where the people at the top, a flat rate 10% or something on their billions, it's going to be like a drop in the bucket. They'll just get richer and richer and buy more and more land. You see what's happening in San Francisco. People that have lived in homes for years are being forced out by people that can pay higher rent. Rent control. Rent control and, and, and zoning laws is what's causing the San Francisco problem. They can't build in those communities. Uh, I heard nothing tonight about the two biggest problems facing global humanity. There was said nothing about those two. I don't know if the Liber Libertarian Party intends to address them or not. I assume not. One Number one is the military-industrial complex. Yeah. 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 The largest trillion dollar year killing machine the world has ever Said the U.S. We US, Army, the US military war. is the largest polluter on the planet. Yeah. Number yeah, two, we agree. Was number two, for sure. number two the, for America, the biggest problem we're facing now is the takeover of our government by people that are very skilled at lying and very skilled at appointing politicians masquerading as judges to change our legal system. Once you have people like Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, uh, Robert Bork, Ian Megas, Clarence Thomas, these people have no interest in justice for common people. No interest at all. They're, they're, they're paid, they're intellectual prostitutes that are owned and operated by the billionaire class. And that's what we see today. And, uh, yeah, wake up, guys. Our, our, our courts have been gradually ruling that it's okay for billionaires to buy, sell, okay. and own politicians. That's the definition of a billionaire pimp and his intellectual prostitute in Congress or the Senate. That's where we are. If we don't address those two issues, nothing else is going to matter. Yeah. Because the kids have, our kids and grandkids have no future. It's over for them in 30 yeah. years. That's what's happening. You're making too much sense. Are you guys Sorry, taking notes? Yeah. All right, let's 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 get our, our speaker, speaker up. Speaker has the last word. All right. Uh, can I can I bring this? I can bring this back up, right? Yes, you can bring it back up. Uh, I just took it up there to show the meme. It's a good meme. Solid uh, meme. Yeah. 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 I, I, first cool. off. Uh, right, right, right behind the mic with the cords, and then put the pole the right in the. Put your, Oh, whoa. Did you guys take good notes on what we advised you? Okay, now just scroll it over a little bit. Okay, so uh, first off, the war, uh, the Libertarian Party was, was founded uh, during the Vietnam War. We're anti war. I apologize if that didn't come out more in the memes, but that is the case. Um, I was going to show. It was a dri you can access your drive. Uh, it, uh, well, I was going to show more memes. It's off, but pull the pull your drive, put the drive back in. Okay. USB cord in the back or on the side. Plug it in the side on the right, towards the back. Okay, let it let it boot up and you'll be all set. Thanks. So thanks, uh, College of Complexes. Merry Christmas. Had a good time. Uh, again, always always fun to come back here and. Uh, trigger the commies. Uh, so let's just continue on, uh, shall we? Have lots of good memes here. Here's one. We'll just start right here. 
got about four, three or four minutes, okay? So you got two guys coming together, Trump called, Bernie called, they come together over economic illiteracy. <laughs> Here's another Bernie meme. Greed, guns, and prisons are what's wrong with America. Now give me 90% of your income or I'll send men with guns after you to put you in prison. <laughs> so you got, you got taxation, the, def, the de definition in the, in the dictionary, the levying of a tax, what does levying mean? Impose, what does impose mean? Force. So uh, force means coercion or compulsion. Especially with the use of threat of violence. So, <laughs> cool. taxation is force, as you can see. Truth is treason in an empire of lies, says one of the great anti-war voices, Ron Paul. Here's Bernie as a non-playable character. Fight the system by making it bigger. <laughs> here's here's a here's a two buttons Roosevelt. First button. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Second button, put Japanese people in internment camps. Which one does he choose? <laughs> um, all right. Here's Ron Swanson from uh, Parks and Rec, the libertarian character. There's only one thing I hate more than lying. Democratic socialism, which is socialism, that's lying about being democratic. But he cut out the words milk and water. Rare image of communism work. <laughs> Here's Arby's uh, curly fry, like the, the snake from the Gadsden flag. Don't tread on me. Oh, that's cute. Well, that didn't work, says the red flag with Marx, Engels, and Lenin on it. Here's another one of those quadrant memes. Everybody seems to agree Stalin was bad, except for the top left authoritarian... Uh, <laughs> People who have strong opinions on whether Stalin was not bad. Taxation is not theft. It is democratic theft. I think I think that's kind of what uh, Charlie, Charlie was saying, right? It's the same mantra. So here you got Star Wars. You got Obi Wan saying, "Use the Force, Luke." To which Luke says, "I don't believe in coercion." Gas oh. prices, arm, leg, both. Okay. Uh, there's the ring from Lord of the Rings around Frodo's neck, which is my paycheck. And then Bilbo sees it, and he's the Democrats. He freaks out. What makes sex not rape? Consent. What makes a job not slavery? Consent. What makes a transaction not robbery? What makes taxation not theft? Magical fairy dust. <laughs> Here you got a red coat patrolling colonial America. He's still your king, whether you voted for him or not. Stop protesting and deal with it, snowflake. Okay. All right, we gotta start. Uh, let's get your closing remarks. All right, here's some closing remarks. It's Professor X. Me trying to remember the last time conservatives conserved anything. <laughs> All right. So here you got you got anarcho-communism. F the government. Oh, absolutely. But also, support every welfare program they enforce. LMAO, I stand for absolutely nothing. Okay, we got to wrap up. All right, wrapping up. Uh, alligators in Chicago, can we tax that, says J.B. Pritzker. So you got a gentleman with a nice-looking fish, okay. which is his paycheck, and then you got a bear behind him representing And let's not commit time theft tonight for the restaurants. So let's... Yeah, I'm looking at time. We got, we're still... Uh, uh, we, I think I showed that one already. Give me liberty or give me death, says Patrick Henry. If you hate America, why don't you leave, says somebody else. All right, then. I know, we got it. All right, well, I'll leave on this one. Kurt Russell in the Disney movie yeah, yeah. in the 60s, when you first discover libertarianism, six months later, I don't give a fuck about your war or your president when he snake Pliskin. All right, thanks, guys. Hey. All right. Have a look out, Andy. Have a look out, Andy. <laughs> college of Com College of Complexes. We're uh, adjourned for the evening, and we'll see you all next Saturday night. Thank you for coming. Thank you all. Have a great Christmas. Twenty-two.